You are tuned in to Faith City Outreach with Marina Maria, the founder of Global Gospel Worship Radio. Marina interviews local pastors and global leaders, sharing their testimonies and the work they're doing for the Lord. In Matthew 6.33, Jesus reminds us, Seek first God's kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. We hope this program will encourage you to do just that. Now here's your host, Marina Maria. Welcome to Faith City Outreach. This is Marina Maria with today's special guest, Greg Bundar, who is currently the National Director of Christian Voice Australia and is the National Media Spokesperson on Faith Issues, Politics, Business, and Ethics. Greg currently consults to various Christian charities and advocacy organizations. He holds an MBA from University of New England, where he majored in communications. Greg has a solid background in stakeholder, media, and government relations, and specializes in issues management, research, social issues, and political strategies. Thank you, Greg, for being on Faith City Outreach to share how the Lord has been using you in Christian Voice Australia to lobby the government to ensure that Christian schools can live out their faith without interference from government or anti-Christian activists. Thank you very much, Verena, for having me on the program. And uh, I am delighted to be with you uh, all the way here from Australia. Thank you so much again. Greg, I am honored to have you on Faith Study Outreach, where I interview global leaders and pastors. Thank you for being a courageous leader of the Christian faith in Christian Voice Australia. I know the Lord is using you in an influential way in Christian Voice Australia to support Christian schools. But before we discuss this topic, please inform our listeners about the mission of Christian Voice Australia so that they know what you do. Yeah, that's a good question. Christian Voice Australia is really what you would call a think tank, a Christian think tank. Um, we, we, we are made up of a number of um, uh, Christian churchgoers, uh, leaders, and, and what we do is we try and identify issues of concern to all Australians, but particularly Christians within the Australian community. And in that regard, we're really a think tank, an advocacy organisation. We're non-denominational, but we're national and we uh, have a lot of issues that we normally try and address within any given uh, week, month or year, Marina. I heard and I have read that Australia has a high percentage of Christians. What is the actual percentage of the Christian population in Australia? Well, you're quite right. I mean, like worldwide, I have to tell you that our Christianity in terms of population is decreasing. Um, back in 1971, around about nearly 87% were Christians uh, in Australia, identified as Christians. In 2015, it went down to about 53%. And guess what? In 2021, the last time a survey was taken through the census, uh, we were down to 43.9% of a total population of about 26 million. So Christianity is on the decline. Uh, however, if you look within that uh, within that population group, you'll find that there's been a real growth in um, orthodox uh, uh, Christianity, like the Greek Orthodox people. They've grown a lot. I think it's due to immigration. But in particular, what surprises us is that the people that identify with no religion is up to nearly 39%. So it's a real issue uh, for us here in Australia to try and identify um, uh, the, the actual uh, root cause of why Christianity is on the decline. So what happened in 2021 that that uh, the percentage declined? Well, right, now this is a good question because, you see, our Australian Bureau of Statistics, when they do a survey, they don't mandate that you have to tick the box on religion. So, of course, if people don't tick the box on religion, then we can't identify whether they are Christian or not. So a lot of people would just say, oh, I'll just tick no religion. But in point of fact, if you mandate it, I think there'd be more people identifying with it. The second reason I think, Marina, that the Christianity is falling, and, and I suspect the same worldwide, is the fact is that 
even churches are going very left-wing in some ways. They're not identifying with the true uh, Judeo-Christian heritage. They're not identifying with a biblical worldview. And therefore, I think people are getting disillusioned and I think they they sort of really give up. So there's some of the reasons why I think Christianity is on the decline, particularly here in Australia. I read the article you sent me written by Australian Law Reform Commission, and it said that the Australian government has committed to reforming federal anti uh, excuse me anti discrimination laws mm. to endure that religious educational institution one must not discriminate against a student on the basis of sexual orientation, gender identity, marital or relationship status or pregnancy. Two, must not discriminate against a member of staff on the basis of sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, marital or relationship status or pregnancy. Three, can continue to build a community of faith by giving preference in good faith to persons of the same religion as the educational institution in the selection of staff. What is the reaction from Christians about this? Mm. Well, let me just give you a bit of background, Marina, very quickly. Yes. Our government, we've got a new government that came here in May 2020, uh, May 22, uh, just over a year ago or a year and a half ago. And it's essentially a, a left wing or a, or a socialist or, 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 or if you want to call it, you know, a very much a, a woke government in the sense that they are, they are very much influenced by the 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 woke community the lgbti community they're very influenced also by a lot of the socialist uh uh trade unions for example so we've got a government here that is trying to now appease all those people that have voted for them so what they've done is the attorney general here in australia has said okay i want to tell the australian law reform commission which is a government body to inquire into how best we can make, in particular, Christian schools, how, we, how can we make them become, I guess, in a way more secular and thereby denying uh, the school the right to hire Christians of faith, uh, allowing students of, um, to, you know, who are Christians to, to enrol. But what the government wants to do is to make schools, Christian schools, uh, employ non, non-Christians and also to have students that are perhaps uh, LGBTIQA sort of um, affiliated. So it's a real problem because it's a real attack on Christian schools and Christianity here in Australia, Marina. So I know you have a new prime minister, right? Anthony yes. Albanese? Correct. Albanese, yes, correct. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm, I'm pronouncing it correctly. <laughs> I know there wasn't very much, um, let's say, I don't want to say luck, but uh, it, there wasn't, it wasn't very... It was a very challenging with the last prime minister, mm. uh, Morrison, if I can remember his mm. name. And but now, since you have a new prime minister, how is that going? Is he trying to support the um, trying to trying to support the Christian schools and Christians, uh, the faith in Christians um, better than the last prime minister? No, on the contrary, Marina, the, the former Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, mm -hmm. um, uh, was a Christian. Oh, He's, he was uh, a Christian. Okay. Ab absolutely. He attended a, a fairly large Christian church here in Sydney. Okay. Uh, however, when, when you're in government, uh, you've got to govern for all, not just uh, Christians. You've got to uh, govern for the non-Christians as well. So he was very much pro-Christian. In point of fact, he introduced a bill into Parliament. Uh, religious discrimination bill. Now, unfortunately, Marina, there was so much opposition that it never got to see the light of day in the sense that uh, time ran out, there was an election on, and our new Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, is, of course, from the left, uh, very much influenced by the LGBTIQA community, influenced by the trade unions, influenced by uh, socialist woke-type philosophers. So he now has introduced this new... Uh, inquiry to see if Christian schools can be watered down in terms of 
uh, abiding by their faith. So he's uh, on the contrary, you know, he's not really supporting the ethos of Christian schools. So it's a real concern for us, and it's something that we're continuing to advocate advocate against because, um, uh, you know, we've got over 180 Christian schools here nationally uh, with around about 140,000 students. Now, if they all, if, if the government attacks the right of those schools, the Christian schools, there's going to be a lot of issues here because, uh, you know, Christianity will start to decline even further. What is the reaction of the Christian population about this, towards this? Oh, look, they are absolutely irate. Marina, the problem we've got is that mums and dads send their children to a Christian school because of the ethos of the school, Mm -hmm. you know, the the, the actual uh, commitment to a biblical worldview. Now, if all of a sudden Christian schools are mandated to to take on non-Christian teachers, take on students who are anti-Christian, it's going to have a real impact on the philosophy, the ethos, and the actual exactly. actual biblical worldview of the school. So that's a real concern to parents, to organisations like ourselves, and even to a lot of politicians who might be Christians, Marina. I know that Christian Voice Australia lobbies the government to ensure that Christian schools can live out their faith without interference from government or anti-Christian activists. What does the lobbying look like on your part? Yeah, that's a Really good question, because lobbying can take a number of forms, as you would know. But in particular, what I've been doing in our group, our organisation, look, we attend what's called parliamentary representation. We actually meet with members of parliament, both in the Senate, which is the upper house, and the lower house is called the House of Representatives. So we meet with politicians, MPs, members of parliament, and we and we say to them, look, uh, you shouldn't be supporting that or you should be supporting this or whatever the case may be. We leave them a research paper. Uh, so that's one way. The second way that we invariably always get involved in is what what's called, and you'd be aware of this, Senate inquiries. There might be an inquiry where you have to appear before the Senate, give evidence for a particular inquiry. So we, 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 were, we were called up to give evidence on abortion, euthanasia, all sorts of issues to say, you know, that uh, we as Christian Voice Australia representing, you know, thousands of Christians, we're of this particular view. So we appear before the government, but we also do press releases, campaigns. Uh, We have a national webinar program and we're very strong on social media, Marina. And then finally, at the election in May 2022, we actually identified uh, candidates that were non-Christian that were anti-Christian and and not pro-life. And we said to them, you know, uh, that, um, you know, what, why are you anti-Christian and what have you? So we made a big, big effort to try and tell the voters of that particular area that your candidate doesn't like Christians, uh, is not pro-life uh, and so on. So that we made them, av- we made them know that uh, some candidates are totally against Christianity and therefore you know they need to know and and we don't tell people how to vote marina we say to them let Christ be your guidance but vote according to your conscience your biblical worldview uh, but we'll here are the facts that you need to know so that's the kind of things that we do in terms of lobbying do you ever go to churches absolutely i mean i i'm invariably called out to preach uh, three sundays out of the month uh, at various churches around the country and uh, there, I not only do I preach, but I also give an outview, an outline of uh, what the current issues of concern are to Christians, to churchgoers. So very much so, and that's a very uh, vital way to connect with um, the Christian community here in Australia. But I love it. I love preaching, and I love talking about uh, the Great Commission. So yeah, absolutely. Amen. How about visiting the schools? Do you guys ever visit the schools and also talk to the students? Yeah, you know, sometimes we do, but we do have an organisation here called the Australian uh, Christian Schools Organisation, which is uh, very strong, and they do a lot of that sort of work. But we do talk to schools, we talk to teachers, and then we try and make sure that our voice is heard. But in particular, the Christian Schools Association is doing a wonderful job. So we leave a lot of that sort of uh, lobbying or or, um, advocacy to them. Before you lobby... Do you as a team, and I'm not sure if you go as a team, 
Do you pray together Look, before absolutely. you lobby? I mean, yeah, we, we have a Monday morning prayer meeting um, so uh, every week. So um, that's there. But in particular, we pray. Up, we actually have a prayer meeting on a particular issue, Marina. So if we have to, I was in Canberra just um, oh, two weeks ago, tomorrow, um, and we had what's called the Australian National Prayer Breakfast. Mm. We had over a thousand people turn up. And then we went there and we listened to a, a keynote speaker. And there you have politicians, you've got churchgoers. And that's a big prayer meeting because what we were praying about is that there's a that you know that 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 governments are biblical, that, that they have godly government, and in particular we're praying about issues. So yes, we do get involved, and I think it's critical that you put everything to prayer anyway, Marina. Hmm. Amen. Well, the foundation should be prayer, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. How are you, or can you say that Christians in Australia are being proactive? in supporting their religious faith? Geez, that's absolutely, I know I keep saying this, but that is a great question because one of the things you find that Christians are very reluctant to speak out in the public square. They are so reluctant that in fear, in fear of persecution, intimidation, harassment, and, and, and if you do speak out, you would well know in America, as it in Australia, you'll be hauled, hauled before some court or you'll be, you know, uh, cancelled or whatever the case might be. So Christians are very reluctant to actually mm -hmm. speak up. So organisations like myself, I'm, and I have to tell you, I've had death threats, I've had nasty letters, I've had all sorts of things, but I just leave it in God's hand because, you see, one of the things that comes to my mind, Marina, is Timothy 2.13. Those who reject him will be rejected by him. Mm -hmm. So I think we've got to make sure that we continue to declare our faith and not be scared about doing so. But I can understand why some people might because of the the, the retaliation from the secular, um, you know, woke communities out there. What advice would you give to those people who are in fear? Look, you know, I, I think... Because you know that fear comes from yeah, the enemy, right, Greg? Absolutely. Absolutely. Look, I think you've got to just... Stick to Matthew 28, 16 to 20. I think that, you know, how do you best fulfill the Great Commission? If you're a Bible-believing Christian, mm -hmm. then you would want to fulfill the Great Commission. Now, you mm -hmm. can do that in your local school group, your local playground, even within your family, your extended family. So I think, you know, if you stick to Matthew 28 and then say to people, you know, I'm going to fulfill the Great Commission and make the gospel known. So I think you do that. The best advice I can give people to do that, not be not be frightened, but, but by the same token, I think we're going to do it in a loving way because we're not going to agree with everybody, Marina. You know, that's very true. And for them to be reminded that God mm. did not give us Christians a spirit of fear, mm. but of power and love and sound mind. He will protect mm. us. And he has kept his promises. How many promises mm. does he have? Right? Mm. He has Absolutely. so many promises. And when we are in his will, he will give mm. us strength. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. In that same article that you sent me, I read that the Australian Law Reform Commission says that under its treaties that the government has signed, mm. Australia has obligations to respect and protect human mm. rights, including right to non-discrimination and equality, freedom of thought, conscience and religion, life, privacy, freedom of expression, work, education, mm. cultural rights, and children's rights. And they will consider international human rights law to propose reforms with Australians' international obligations. This is confusing because... From what I understand, <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong, they signed a treaty to respect all the aforementioned areas, including religious freedom. But now it sounds like they may not respect the treaty because they are bringing in international human rights laws. Yeah, this is a very good point you make here because in, in point of fact, you're totally correct. It's almost contradictory because here they are having an inquiry, the government, <laughs> you know, to try and water down religious freedom religious faith uh, that, that, that we may have. There's a thing called the International Covenant on Civil 
and political rights, the IWCPR. Now, Article 18 of that particular international covenant says that the religious freedom ought to be respected, okay, and 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 in in doing so, uh, it should allow people to identify with their faith and and what have you. However, if this new inquiry by our government goes at, goes ahead and recommends that you know there's no more religious freedom, that in actual fact it, it is in contravention of this particular international um, article. So, you know, you're quite right. Um, we're in trouble if it is because we keep pointing to the government that, hey, you must abide by the International Convention on Civil and Political Rights, which, 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 which has as part of it religious freedom. You as a team in the, um, I know you're part of the team in Christian Voice Australia. How are you guys approaching this? Well, again, we've, we've, we've made numerous submissions at the uh, the federal government level. We've also done it to a few uh, uh, state governments, but in particular, we've got to make sure that we appear before such committees. We made a submission into the current inquiry by the Australian Law Reform Commission, and we said to them that, you know, we must protect our faith, we must protect our right to employ Christian teachers, have Christian students. And if you don't if, if you're an LGBTIQA teacher or student, why would you want to come to a Christian school? Exactly. Go to somewhere else. We're, exactly. we're happy to have you. We're happy to right. have you, but live by our ethos and our faith and don't try and change it. Uh in point of fact, we're happy to pray for you and with you. But don't try and change the school or our ethos or our faith because you don't agree with it. I agree. Just like a um, a a Christian teacher working in a public school mm. needs to do the same thing. They Correct. need to follow by the rules, follow by the curriculum, and obey everything else, right? That's it. That's it. Do yep. the same Hold thing. On. There's no difference, right? Yeah. But what they're trying to do is bring in students and teachers to try and change Christian schools to become secular, well, no, no, you go to another school. You know, it's just like if I go to a golf club and I don't follow the rules, what's the golf club going to tell me? Get out. Absolutely. And so that's the that's the uh, analogy I'm trying to make, yeah. Absolutely. And I totally support what you're saying because, like you say, we have a free will to choose a school. Well, choose the school that is going to be according to your yeah. beliefs and your values, yeah. et cetera. Just like when Christians go to school, to a Christian mm. school, we're going yeah. to a Christian school because for the same yeah. reasons, right? Yeah, absolutely. Look, we had to be, I, I, I'm, I'm so delighted if a non Christian or an LGBTIQA student or teacher comes to a Christian school. Maybe they'll learn something. Maybe they'll be, maybe maybe the Holy Spirit will convert them. The point is, you're welcome, but don't try and change us. That's the issue. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what the Lord does? The Lord loves people, mm. right? Mm. Amen. He, he doesn't Amen. like the sin, right? But he loves mm. the person, right? Yeah. Yep. And and That's and it. I think that that is something that we need to remember when we have different um, beliefs and values yeah. that we are called to be a light and we love mm. the sinner, but we hate mm. the sin. Yeah, love the sinner, hate the sin. Absolutely right, Marina. Greg, what is the Lord putting in your heart lately during your prayer time? I know you're going through some challenging times as we're talking about supporting mm. the faith in um, Christian schools. What is the Lord telling you? Look, I'm 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 sort of pleased you asked that because I often, you know, when you're doing this advocacy work, you wonder whether you're doing the right thing, you whether you're doing God's will. You know, the thing that's on my heart daily is, Heavenly Father, I'm praying that I am fulfilling the Great Commission and I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing as a Christian. You see, one of the problems, see, Marina, we're all going to have to give an account of Absolutely. ourselves. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and. And, and when I do so, I want to say, God, I've run the race. I've done the best I can. Now, I just want to make sure that here while I'm on this side of eternity, that I'm doing God's will. So that kind of thing always weighs on my heart to make sure that the advocacy work I'm doing is, is what God wants me to do. Amen. That's wonderful. What 
advice, what last words can you share to our listeners that is in your heart that could be related to anything? Could be related yeah. to our faith, especially now during these dark times where our mm. faith is being, where we're being mm. persecuted, times where we mentioned and talked earlier about mm. many Christians not being proactive because they're in fear. Yeah. Look, I have to go back to Timothy 2.13, Marina, and simply do not reject him. Exactly. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. And, and just continue to pray because, you know, if you reject God, when the time, you know, when it t- comes for you to give an account for yourself, you may well re- be rejected by him. So, look, keep the faith and do not reject him wherever you are, home, school or work. Do not reject him. Right. And he says that he, if we call on him, that he will mm. help us. Right. He will help us if we call on him when there's times where we get weak and we all do. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. That's why we need him because we get weak. (laughs) Right. And it says it makes it clear. Don't worry about what you're going to say. Right. It'll it'll come at the time when you have to say it. So there you go. And it's biblical. Yeah. Absolutely. He he will Mm. give us the words to say it just like he did with Moses. That's it. Right. That's it. Amen. Mm. Greg, thank you so much for being a loyal and courageous leader of faith. May God continue to bless and protect your family and give you favor in your ministry and in Christian Voice Australia. Please tell Mm -hmm. the team, I have not met them, but please tell them thank you for the work that they do along with you. And um, may God bless them all. I am just so honored to interview you and honored to talk to a strong advocacy Mm. organization that is doing what you're doing is just advocating um, thank for Christians. Thank you. Thank you Amen. again. Thank you, Marina. You are doing wonderful work for God. So bless you, sister in Christ. Thank you. God bless. God bless. Thank you for listening to Global Gospel Worship Radio with Marina Maria, where all the nations praise the Lord with Christian international music and radio programs. For more information about our radio ministry, please go to Global Gospel Worship Radio. Dot org. And now we'd like to bless you with this scripture from Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Thanks for listening.